Democrat from Virginia wants a deal. He's quoted recently as saying few of his fellow lawmakers in Washington seem to grasp the calamity the nation faces if the talks fail. In a Washington Post op-ed this morning, he writes, we are waiting for the leaders of Wall Street to speak out. They've recovered, he says, far more quickly than most Americans from the market meltdown of 2008, but they at least should understand the repercussions of playing Russian roulette with the debt ceiling. Senator Warner's calling for a mix of spending cuts and tax breaks to cut the federal debt. Senator Warner is with us live this morning from Capitol Hill. Senator, there's a huge amount of speculation. Where do you now stand on what you're hearing? Well, listen, I think that most of the street, most of the business community assumes this is just one more political squabble and that we'll get it fixed. I'm here to say I'm not sure it's going to get fixed unless both sides are willing to move. We're starting to see more movement from the Democrats on entitlements. We've got to find a way to balance this as well with revenues. If we don't see north of $4 trillion, I'm not sure we're going to make the impression on the market that we're serious. And I think the market knows better than most elected officials and, frankly, mo better than most Americans that we've already used our traditional tools if we hit another brick wall. We've already used monetary policy. The Fed can't lower rates anymore. We've already used fiscal stimulus. So if we go over this cliff, we don't have a lot of tools left, and particularly with the disruptions in Europe, this is really a dangerous item. Our we need folks speaking out. Sure. Our, our viewers should remember that you were an early investor in Nextel and other right. technology companies. You made, I read, $200 million in business, so you know business very well. Well, but yes, why sir. now are you saying to Wall Street that it's Wall Street's job to pressure the politicians? Why write an op-ed this morning on that? That would seem very strange to a lot of people. Well, Simon, I've been saying this for months on end. There's been a bipartisan group of us, it was the so-called Gang of Six, that said, let's take the Simpson-Bowles proposal, which had $3 of cuts for $1 of revenue. It said, let's lower rates, let's build in tax reform. We've gotten a lot of attaboys from the business community, business organizations all across the country. Saxby Chambliss and I, Senate Republican Senator from Georgia, have been preaching this. Yet those attaboys don't turn into, all right, real serious pressure that says, okay, step up and if not this plan endorse another bipartisan plan uh, we've seen the power of the street we've seen the power of the business community when they bring their full pressure to bear on public policy issues they need to be in this game as well as we get down to the end point because we're soon going to pass that point of no return and when the short start saying well let's 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 start betting against America we could see this thing start to unravel very quickly and I'm just saying that benefits no one Senator Warner, there were headlines this morning that President Obama and the Republicans are actually in discussions about a major tax overhaul. Can you tell us what exactly the Republicans are willing to put on the table after being so staunchly against any sort of increase in taxes? Listen, I don't know. I know there's a group of us who've been think thinking about a broad tax reform effort that would lower corporate tax rates, that would lower personal tax rates, but that would dramatically cut back on all tax expenditures. You mentioned some of those items earlier. Those are important, but they're really still fairly insignificant. If we're going to get the kind of real revenues to dramatically change our tax code the way we did in 1986, it's going to have to be much more dramatic. Again, I would take the Simpson-Bowles Commission report. It's been out there for eight months. It's been fairly well vetted. It's not a perfect guide uh, roadmap, but it's at least a jumping off point. And we've got to be willing. We've seen there's not a Democrat only or Republican only solution to this. We need those kind of reasonable people that can read a balance sheet to weigh in more heavily. Have congressional leaders been consulted by the Treasury about their efforts to find uh, legal sort of, I don't want to say loopholes, but ways to stave off uh, coming to this deadline and not making good on our obligations? That would be totally irresponsible. And if the business community or any political leaders tried to take that that way out uh, you know the business community and others have been saying for months we need predictability I think the single best thing we could do for job creation is put in place a 10-year plan that knocks at least four to four and a half to five trillion dollars off this debt and for us to suddenly say let's find some legal loophole to punt on this you know, that would be uh, remarkable to my mind. And again, uh, if, the, if we go over this cliff, there's going to be blame for the political leadership. But again, I'll make my point I made in the post today. The business community has been strangely silent on this. Sure. There's been no business leader I've talked to, and I know you'll have some other folks on later, but there's no business leader I've talked to that hasn't said, you've got to solve this on both sides of the balance sheet. You've, yes, dramatically got to cut spending, including entitlements, but you've also got to get revenues. Okay.
All right, Senator, it was excellent to talk to you. Thank you very much for your time. Senator Warner joining us there from Capitol Hill. Meantime, outside groups playing a big role in the debt ceiling.